looks like this. We've got 4 fifths x plus 8 equals 20. Now your job or your goal for this problem is to solve for x. That's what you're going to do today. Okay, that's, that's it. All right, so, Trail, do you remember what the first thing you should do is? Okay, how? I forgot. Take four fifths times itself on the same side and then do it on the other side. Okay, quick question for you. If I do four fifths by itself on the, the right hand, or the, your left hand side there, I'm going to have to also multiply it to the eight. Do you want to multiply with fractions? No. Not yet. Okay. So, anybody else have something different? Subtract eight. Subtract eight. When you're working these again, what you want to do is you want to undo your order of operations. So you want to move backwards. So the last thing in the order of operations was adding and subtracting. So when you're solving an equation, the first thing you should do is get rid of that adding and subtracting. So if we subtract 8, that gives us 4 fifths x equals 12. Okay? Now, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. But... We're dividing a fraction. Anybody remember what you do when you divide a fraction? What's the reciprocal of four fifths? Um, five fourths. Five fourths. So I multiply by five fourths. Now, some of you do not like fractions, right? Do you like? Does everybody in here like fractions? Okay, I didn't think so. I don't either, and I'm a math teacher. I have to do them, but. One of the things we could have done if we would have wanted to, now we're going to be done with this problem in just a few seconds, but one of the things we could have done is if you don't like working with fractions, you could have multiplied the entire thing by 5 at the beginning and all the fractions would have went away. You would have had bigger numbers to work with, but you would have got the same answer. Okay. So just so that you are aware of that, one of the things I could have done is I could have multiplied the whole thing by 5, distributed through to everything, Yes, I would have had bigger numbers, but I would have had no fractions to deal with. Okay, have you ever done that before? Some of you may have, some of you may not have. Okay, but that's one of the ways that you could have done it. Your equation then would have looked like this. 4x oops, plus 40 equals 100. And then you would have solved for x out of that. Subtracted 40 and divided by 4, which is the same thing we're going to get. Anybody know what 12 times 5 fourths is? 18. 18? 15. 15? Anybody need a refresher on how she got that? Sure. Okay. One of the ways that you could do it is you could take 12 times 5, which is 60, 1 times 4, which is 4, and 60 divided by 4 is 15. Another way is canceling, and I have 3 times 5. Whichever way you want to do it, that is your choice. Okay, I'm not picky. Whatever makes it easier for you. Okay. What do you think? Do you remember how to do this? Yeah? Okay. What if you have one that looks like that, where you have variables on both sides. Okay. This one's a little bit different because I have P on both sides of my equation. So what do I do? Okay, Subtract the smaller one. So in this case, if I go with what she said, I'm going to subtract the smaller one. Which one's smaller? The 7. Okay, so I actually like the way that you said that. That's probably the first time in all my years of teaching that someone said subtract the smaller one. Okay, and that's, I agree with you. A lot of you get in the habit of always moving your variable to the left and your numbers to the right, which is not wrong either. You would have just dealt with negative numbers instead of just having positives to divide by. It's not going to make a difference. So if I would have subtracted the 9, I would have had a negative 2 divided by a negative, and I still would have got the same answer. So just so that you're aware of it, there is more than one option for you. Okay. Um, so if I move the letters to the right, what do I have to do with the numbers? 
moving to the left. The analogy that I usually use for that is if any of you have siblings, you'll get this, is that when I have, I've got three sisters. One of them is an older sister of mine. That's the one that I lived with, two are younger, which I barely even lived with. But my older sister and I used to fight. So for those of you who had siblings, I'm sure you fought at one time or another. Okay? And so when I used to fight with my older sister, what did my mom do? Separate us on all the opposite sides of the house. That's what you're doing. You're getting your numbers to one side, your letters to the other. So you're separating, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So when I do that, when I go straight down, these guys cancel out. What's 13 plus 5? 18. What's 9 minus 7? 2. And the 5s cancel out. Now that I have all the letters to one side and the numbers to the other, what is the last step I need to do for this problem? Divide by 2. What is 18 divided by 2? 9. Now, one of the things that you could also do, and you might have had a teacher in the past that has asked you to do this, is you could check your answers. Okay? That's something as a tool for you that you could do. I'm not going to require you to check your answers, okay? because I trust you. But what you could do is you could throw 9 back in for P and see if both sides match. If they do, you did it right. If it doesn't, you screwed up. Okay? So what I mean by that is if you took 7 times 9 plus 13 and 9 times 9 minus 5, you should get the same answer. If you don't, you screwed up, try again. Most of the time it's usually because you added wrong or subtracted wrong or divided wrong. Okay? What do you think? Do you guys remember how to do this? I know it's been about a year because last year geometry you didn't do a whole lot of this type of stuff. One last one. I'll let you. Hey, this one's got all kinds of fun stuff happening. Julia, what did you do first? Because I see you're already working on the next step. Okay. All right. So you distributed right here. I'm just going to show that with green arrows. What would you get? Okay. What do you guys think? Do you agree with her step? The first thing that she did? Okay, all right, good. I agree with it too, but I was just making sure you guys did. Uh, Nacy, what is the next thing you're supposed to do? Okay, can you tell me what you got? And just because I forgot, why'd you get two? Okay, so two negatives make it a positive? All right, and then a one positive and a negative makes it a negative. That's why you get negative 14. Okay, good. Okay, hey, Alyssa, what do you think I should do next? Something with the 14, maybe? Okay, what do you think? Add it. All right, so I'm just going to change colors, and you want to add 14. Now, one of the other things I almost forgot to talk about is that I talked about one side to the other side. Do you guys know what I mean by sides? If you don't, what I'm talking about is the sides of the equal sign. There's a left side of the equal sign and a right side of the equal sign. One of the things that you could do is imagine that there's a big giant wall right where the equal sign is, and you're flopping sides. Okay? Like in history class, we talked about the, the Berlin Wall, if you ever know what that is down now, but it used to be there. Okay, so you did that. I like it. So, Miss Kranz, now what? You did yours in a different order? That's fine. Um, 
What about the 15 hours? Okay, so what did I get there? I forgot to ask Alyssa. Negative 24 plus 14. Negative 10. Good. Okay. So now the let those numbers are all gone, right? So the way Alyssa moved it is she moved it to the numbers to the left. So that means all the letters have to go to the right. Right, opposite side. So how do I move the 15? Subtract it. Now something that you may have had in the past, and I don't know who your teachers were, but one of the things that I do, that you could have done, is sometimes when you have more than one thing happening here, like this 2x and that negative 12x, sometimes you may have had a teacher that said, you know what, why don't you clean that up? Why don't you get those together before you move it? That is up to you. If you want to do that first and then move stuff from left to right, go ahead. Okay? Me personally, you're going to do it eventually, so I don't really care which way, which order you do it in. Whether you add those together first and then move it, or if you just move it all together and then do it all at one time. That's totally up to you. The one thing that I've noticed though, just make sure you don't lose a piece. Because what if you don't deal with the 2x? Would that be wrong? If you didn't have, if you didn't include the 2x there, yeah, so what? You'd be missing part of it. So, does anybody know what 2x minus 12x minus 15x is? Should be higher than that. Negative 25. Okay. So now that we got the negative 25x on the right hand side, the negative 10x or negative 10 on the left hand side, what do I have to do to solve for x? Okay. Now one thing that I want to point out to you guys is some of you, and I heard you know, Mrs. Miss Kranz even said, I did mine differently. Is that wrong? No. Me personally, I would not have gone with what Alyssa did. I would have went with my numbers to the right and my letters to the left because I would have been positives rather than negatives. Ms. Kranz, you, would you agree? Is that probably the way you went? Okay, me too. Is it wrong? No. We're going to get the same answer, aren't we? Now, here's what most of the time you guys screw up with. Negative 10 divided by negative 25 is not 2.5. It's not always the big number divided by the little number. It's the top divided by the bottom. The top is smaller than the bottom, so therefore you're going to get a decimal and or a fraction. Right. A lot of people screw that up because they automatically go with the big one divided by the little one. That's going to show up for you on an ACT, by the way, when you have five different choices. They'll give you the right choice, and then they'll give you the, the other way, like 25 divided by 10, which would be 2.5 or 5 halves. Which, in reality, what's the answer? 0.4 or 2 fifths. Whichever way you leave that answer, that is up to you. Okay? I'm not picky as far as whether you have a decimal or whether you have a fraction. Okay? So what do you think? Can you handle that? Okay. Now, just so that you guys know, this is going to look big. However, it's really only 17 questions, although it seems like a lot. But a lot of these first ones, it's just one step where you got to add it, you got to subtract it, divide it, multiply it, whatever you have to do. Okay, now, I need to talk about that because some of you don't understand what multiples of four mean. It does not mean you start with one and then go every fourth one. Because one is not a multiple of four. What's the first multiple of four? Right. So you start at number four. And then what's the next one? Yay. And then, and then, and then, yeah. Okay, good. So just so that you guys know that, 